Hi everybody! I haven't done a video in a while so today I figured I would do a quick video on my new setup in my uh, craft room here and some things I got for Christmas and um, what I'm working on. Uh, so I'll, I'll get right to what I'm working on first. Um, I have decided to um, do some digital stamps, add coloring pages to my Etsy shop. Um, things like that. So this is one of the pages that I'm working on. Um, I had a few comments before on one of my other um, YouTube videos and pictures that I've placed on Instagram that my the girls that I draw would make nice digital stamps or um, coloring pages. So I'm working on that. So this is um, the first one that I've done. I still have some editing to do in uh, Photoshop and uh, um, those programs to clean up some of the lines. I am still new to inking and uh, my line work needs to improve quite a bit um, but I'm practicing and uh, hopefully this page will be up in just a few days. Um, the coloring pages won't cost very much on the on the Etsy, on the Etsy shop um, anywhere from a dollar to three dollars um, maximum that's what I'm putting um, I, I think on those pages so far um, depending I guess on how detailed I get in the future but right now they'll be anywhere between a dollar to three dollars and you know after you buy it you're able to print it off as many times as you'd like kind of thing. There will be some rules um, set within the the policies of the Etsy shop on what you can and can't do with my images and the coloring pages but that's kind of uh, I'm working on that. Um, also my Etsy shop in uh, in the new year I'm hoping to have um, jewelry with my artwork on it and um, for those of you who are, are local um, that may that may be watching um, hopefully for next year's craft fairs I will have you know um, items for um, to sell uh, like tote bags and again the jewelry I'll have jewelry for sale as well and mugs and you know I'm um, looking into iPhone cases for my artwork and and stuff like that so you can uh, keep watch and hopefully I'll have everything um, on the go in the first couple months of New Year so that's something uh, to look forward to and something that's pretty exciting for me um, okay so I'll show you a few things that I that I got for Christmas um, <clears throat> I was given this new watercolor let me pull this out just a little bit I was given this new watercolor moleskin journal I'm currently working in a moleskin journal as it is but this has watercolor paper in it and it is quite a bit thicker than the regular sketchbooks oh everything is going all let's see here let's get this into focus let's try there we go so this has watercolor paper inside of it I'm not sure what the size is but it is in landscape uh, I don't think it tells me what size it is in here nope. so anyway it has watercolor paper it's about 135 pounds I have a little one um, the little pocket sized one that I use as well um, this one right here but I bought this one quite a quite a while ago. Let me see if I can turn off this manual or automatic zoom thing here. Um, I did have this one filled up with a bit of stuff. When I first started learning how to art journal, I had quite a bit of stuff in here. But I didn't like the way the book was turning out. So what I did was I, I busted open the spine and I ripped out the first, I don't know, maybe seven or eight pages of things that I didn't like. And then I um, put the book back together so now I have a fresh new book that I can practice in. And I did a bad thing when I first bought this book. I put gesso on all of the pages because when I had first um, started art journaling, a lot of the people that I was looking at doing art videos on YouTube and you know people that I was watching said, oh, you have to gesso your pages all the time. You don't. You know, gesso is a great thing to use and it, it helps you with your art, but you don't necessarily 
you don't have to use gesso. So I kind of, to me right now, because my I went from using acrylic to uh, and collaging to mostly doing illustration and, and watercolor, um, I, I kind of ruined the pages because I, I don't need gesso on my pages to do illustration or or to, to do watercolor work. So I'm kind of disappointed with that, but I still have it to play with. So that's those. So, another really cool thing that I got for Christmas this year is the new book from, well, it's not new anymore, but it's uh, Beautiful Faces by Jean Davenport. I won't go through the book, um, but that's what the back and the front cover look like. I'll give a quick flip. You know, it has some nice pages in there, but... Um, really really resourceful for me because I like drawing faces and this book has a lot of um, how to draw different angles, different expressions, how to do hair, different materials that you can use to create the paintings. This was given to me for Christmas. I'm not um, my videos aren't sponsored by anyone, so any of my opinions throughout this video or on any of my other videos up to date are all my own opinions and I'm not getting paid to promote the books or anything. But I have gone through the book and I have read the whole book and uh, as I said it's very informative and um, step by step instructions step by step instructions are, are really good so um, I'm working on a page for my my life book currently uh, that's a little bit uh, different than the lesson that they had planned and I was stuck on how to draw something and this book is um, is going to help me out with that so I'm really happy so that's what I'm working on later today so that's one of the other things that I got for Christmas and the other thing I got for Christmas was the Peerless watercolors. So what these are are little uh, chips. Oh, there we go. Little chips of watercolor. Um, the back size paper. The under the this side right here would be the the ink. And what I've done is I've made um, as a lot of people on YouTube they have instructions and on how to do this stuff but what I've done is I've taken a little corner out of all of the, um, the little chips here and I've made my own palette so I can stick it inside of my, my journal. I like to journal on the couch or sitting on the bed while I'm watching TV or you know things like that um, so this would be really convenient and that's one of the reasons why I think I, I switched over to doing watercolors and, and illustration is that I kind of got sick and tired of having to cart my acrylic paints around with me and then you need a water bottle to clean your brushes and then you need to you have a mess you need to you need a palette to put your paints on and this with a water brush is so much more convenient and pretty much all the supplies I use now it's in various forms of watercolor but um, like I use watercolor, uh, water soluble crayons, pencils, you know, ink tents and Derwent, graphite tint, stuff like that. But it's all things that are that are kept in tins. I don't need a palette for it, and really all I need is my product and my my water brush and and a paper towel. And that's pretty much it. So these are the Peerless watercolors. I haven't really used them yet, other than to make the little color swatches. Um, but when I do, I will definitely get some stuff on, on video for you. Um, so far, the, the colors are really good. So, um, and, and I would assume that depending on how much I decide to paint with them, these little squares here will probably last me six months to a year, if not longer. So it's not bad for the price that I paid for them. So that's that. So the next thing I got for Christmas, which I really, really like, is a full set of Inktense blocks. So I've gone ahead and yesterday I spent almost the entire day doing color swatches and color charts. So this is one that I've done for the Inktense. Let me see if I can bring this in a little bit closer. The colors are really really good they're very vibrant and bright and for anyone that doesn't know anything of that they don't know anything about the ink tense blocks is that these are not watercolors though you can use them as watercolors but they are in fact ink in blocks that you use water to activate so once they are dry they are permanent you can layer them you can put different colors on top of colors to make 
you know, to make that layering effect. So there's 72 pieces in here, and I'll show you real quick. So that's the first layer. And, and this is the second layer. So I'm really excited about these and um, really convenient, as I said, you can pull color off of each of the blocks with your water, with your water brush. Um, if, if anyone is watching and doesn't know what a water brush is, this is a water brush. So basically it's just um, a little barrel. Oh, there we go. A little barrel filled up with water um, with the brush and you basically give it a little squeeze when you need to. Oh, I have a stray hair there. You give it a little squeeze when you need to and it brings out uh, water which allows you to work on watercolor. Oh, my phone is going off. I should have uh, put that on mute there for a bit. So that's the, uh, the ink tents. So I'm excited to use those. So while I was um, making up my color swatches and everything for these, I also found something that was also really convenient for me was this. Um, I know the the angle the angle of my camera is a little bit off here. I I have a weird tripod and so everything is on an angle. So I really hope that it's not too inconvenient to look at. Um, anyway, I, I found this Prismacolor chart as well, so I only have a 72 pack of Prismacolor pencils um, right now, so these are the colors that I have, and I've been watching a lot of uh, YouTube videos um, of people who are combining Copics and Prismacolors and, and various other watercolors together to make art, and I really, really like it, so I think because I like illustrating and um, and I, I like that that kind of that kind of artwork that I'm leaning more towards that. So this was the the Prismacolor chart I got. So this and this I can match up colors really nicely now when I when I'm doing my artwork, and um, I can kind of um, coordinate myself a little bit better, I guess. Which leads me to another thing I got for Christmas. I was given. A 72 pack of Chow Copics, Copics, depending on where you live. And I have wanted, I'm calling them Copics. Um, I have wanted Copics for a long, long, long time. I do have about 15 or 20 that I've bought in the past year or so uh, that, I, that I got at Michael's. But I've never had a full set where I was able to actually blend with them. So I'm really excited about these. Um, I did play with them a little bit, and I'm learning how to, um, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time to master, but I'm learning how to blend with them and, uh, and everything else. The sad thing is that apparently there is a supplier shortage of these things right now, and the place where I buy all my art supplies is saying that um, they are not going to be offering the chow markers until uh, later in 2016. So, um, one good thing is that I, they're not available for me to buy at the moment so I can learn how to use these. The other, the, the sad thing about it is that now I have these and I want more. <laughs> so I have to wait until, um, I guess things get a little bit better with the suppliers. Um, two, actually two of the places that I buy my art supplies, both are saying they have a supplier issue. So fingers crossed, um, that, you know, everything gets resolved um, sooner than later. Another good thing that happened yesterday was I, I, I had a, um, a pack of Derwent art bars here that I don't really like. Um, it's, I know they're watercolor, but they're not really, they're not really my thing. So I was able to do a swap on a Facebook group that, um, that I'm in for more Copics and, and a 24 set, I believe it is a 24 set of Prismacolor markers. So I'm excited to get those and so I made a deal and a trade on that and hopefully I'll get those in a few weeks and I will post those. But this is the color chart for the Copics and I have 72 colors on there um, plus the 20 that I had previously and now I have to work on getting all these colors, whether I get them in the chow, because there are only a certain amount of um, certain amount colors in this particular marker type. Um, I will get the rest in um, in the sketch if I have to. 
So, uh, my boyfriend gave me another um, expensive art supply for Christmas, which means he's gonna have to deal with me buying the rest and probably spending anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars on getting everything else that I need. So, tough luck on him. Great Christmas gift though, I really like it. <laughs> so we'll see where that goes. Um, so on my desk, I have a little penguin cup. I was given this for Christmas a few years ago and just a couple days ago the handle started to crack down here. So I put it on my desk rather than using it so I can get some more use out of it. I don't want to throw it in the garbage. So in my little um, cup here I have these um, glitter pens um, at you. I guess it's another, I think it's another brand of Copic. I know I bought them off of an online store and they were listed with the Copics. I'm not sure if that is true. It says two marker and it's two marker on the Copics too. So I'm assuming they're from the same company. So I have a bunch of glitter pens. Um, I personally am not, personally am not happy with these. Um, the tips seem very dry and they barely, I don't know if you can see this, and they, where, where, are, we? where are we, there we go, it's not going to show, but the tips seem very dull and dry and it's like nothing comes off. I don't know if I'm using them right, but it's just, it's basically a pen and they all do the exact same thing. None of them, the blue one is a little bit, but they barely give off any, any ink whatsoever, so it's a little bit frustrating. Then I have some Copic Multiliners in here. These do not work. I did contact Copic and I told them that I only had these pens for a short period of time and they just stopped working. Um, they let's see here I need to zoom in just slightly they said that if I send them the pen they would analyze the pen and see if they would replace it or if it was my fault that it broke um, I am not going to pay 10 to 15 dollars in shipping just to send them some pens um, so I'm gonna see if I can in fact get some replacement nibs. Again, the place where I order my um, supplies, my art supplies, do not have these tips. And I buy them on Amazon, I can only find them to be like 20 to $30 for a pack of three or a pack of one, which is really ridiculous. So I'm waiting on that. Then I have these Prismacolor markers uh, or pens here. Um, again, not too impressed with these. Um, these all seem to work fine, the colored ones, but this black one has a square tip on the on the end. It's not rounded like the, like the rest. And you can't really see it in the in the picture there in the video, but um, it doesn't write. Like it it doesn't it well it's not writing on my it just writes on my skin a little bit. But if I'm writing on a piece of paper, it doesn't. Um, if I'm holding it like a regular pen. It doesn't work, and I have to literally put the pen completely up straight in order to get a little bit of ink to come off it, and it barely works then. Um, these aren't so bad. These have a rounded tip, so they work better. These were given to me as a Christmas gift, I believe, last year. Uh, I haven't used them a whole lot, but I'm going to start using them again now because I'm getting more into the illustration and stuff. But yeah, not really impressed with uh, with the quality of these either. I don't know if I'm just getting bad pens or you know I, I really don't have an explanation for it. I'm not rough with my materials and, and I'm quite gentle with using my pens and microns because I know that they can't hold up a lot. Um, but yeah they, they, they don't work the greatest. Then I have um, these Uniball pens. These are really great. I have the black ones and the white ones as well. And these are, um, Secure, Secura. God, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. They're Micron pens regardless. All of these, same issue as the Copics. None of these work. This, I had three packs of pens. I opened them all up at the same time. I used each pen once. 
on uh, on top of watercolors so it's not like I use them on top of a um, like acrylics where it, the residue or wax or you know from crayons or, or leads would clog up the nib so I literally used each one of these once and they just stopped working so honestly I have no idea what's going on with my pens but it is very frustrating I am looking online to see if there's a way that I can revive these because I highly doubt that the ink is dried up on the inside and it probably has something to do with the nibs I have no idea so that's my little cup here and I keep everything facing down so that the you know the ink all goes to the the nib so that is that so I'm gonna show you my little thing that I carry around all the time let's see if I can zoom this out here so this is my little caddy that I take around with me um, when I go sit on the couch and I and I art so these are all the other topics that I have in here um, and I have some glitter pens these are jelly roll pens um, again not too fond of these um, I find that the white is not opaque enough for what I what I want it for but I am going to try them again then I have um, Prismacolor pencils and I have my Neo colors that I use quite often. I know this is coming up backwards. And I keep some random things in here like some, um, let's see, and that's as far as I can zoom out. I have rulers and Tombow pencils. This is a little case with, um, with some pencils and a, I think it's called a Mono Zero, um, little eraser from Tombow. This little orange case came from Moleskin. I bought a Moleskin, that little um, watercolor Moleskin that I showed you actually. Uh, when I bought it and opened it, it fell apart. So I sent them a message and they sent me a replacement journal um, and and a pen holder and all kinds of stuff so that was really nice of them um, so I have some masking fluid and I have inks some watercolor paper this is the watercolor paper that I normally use so it is Strathmore um, 140 pound paper now this is a little bit awkward looking in here because of how it's situated and then in the back here I have water brushes I have um, Posca pens and I have various um, more microns the ones that actually still work and scissors and in here I have a stamp pad and a stamp some gelatos I usually, I have a whole set of these, like 28 of them, or 32, but I keep the ones that I typically use the most. Um, that's pretty much what's in here. Uh, so I, I keep a lot of my stuff in here as I'm going around, if I'm sitting on the couch doing my art, that kind of thing. Okay, so let's, uh, let's see if I can't make anyone sick here. I'm not very good at uh, recording. So this is my desk. I have to stand back here just a little bit. So this is uh, the view out my window. The walls in here need to be painted. We haven't really done a whole lot with this room since we moved in. Um, but this is pretty much the space I have from wall to wall. So I have room for um, my two lamps and my... Um, my camera, my tripod here. I am currently watching, let's see here, Bailey J on YouTube and I'm getting some information from her on how she uses her Copic markers and watching her tutorials. And on this computer, yeah I know I, I have two computers, one is to do whatever on and this one is my, is my work computer. Um, and here I'm just uh, scoping out some Facebook stuff while I'm doing some other things. So, let's start down here on the floor, um, excuse the mess here, I have a painting that I'm working on, I have an airbrush compressor, and extra stands, and then down here I have some, some books that I, that I don't typically use, a bottle of gesso, and 
This is some of my paintings on my wall. And this is the back. I have a, a printer and my, um, my silhouette and my scanner printer. And then I have a toner printer and, and a bunch of, bunch of stuff and a big mess on the walls. As I said, the walls in here aren't great, but it does for now. I have a little space heater down here because currently where I live, it is about minus 30 something outside. So it is nice and chilly. So over right here, this is um, a little workshop that I put together, the owl there that you can find on my Etsy shop. It is um, pretty straightforward, good for beginners. Um, I do use a lot of neo colors and, and watercolors and whatnot in it. So this is a little painting that I did um, a few years back, this one right here. And you can see the difference in my work since I painted that. And I have some pens and some you know, little gifts from my, my boyfriend, some Jasmine Beck Griffith um, figurines. Let's see if I can't... What's going on here? Let's try the autofocus. There we go. That's a little bit better. So I have some little figurines there. I really like her work. And I have my, um, my jar from my life book lesson and another bowl of pens and paintbrushes and what have you. Then on this shelf right here, I have some gessos and varnishes and acrylic paints and my pack of Posca pens, some ink. And down here I have my my sketchbooks and some other things that I have. Um, in here I have pit pens. Um, it's a full box of Faber-Castell big brush pit pens. And in here I have a small collection of Letraset aquamarkers. And down here we have glitters and paint daubers and texture paste and Inca gold stuff and more gessos and mediums and what have you. And then down here I have all my little painting boards that I that I purchased recently. So I'm working on some stuff down there. And a pack of Inktense pencils and Graphitints. These are the ones that I was using until I got the ones for Christmas. So I'm just going to keep those for a backup. And then I got some coloring books, adult coloring books that I got for Christmas. And inside here, I have more pit pens. I don't use these too often, but I figured, well, since I have the coloring books, then I can attempt to use them a little bit more. And I do have some stuff up underneath here, but it's a little bit dark, so I just have some bins with random stuff and my um, Wacom tablet that I have, and a garbage pail, and a bunch of wires, and rhinestones, and washi tapes, a sewing machine, um, that kind of thing. So over here, this is my 2015 life book, which I'm going to make a video on that when it's completely finished. I have about a week to do another 10, um, another 10 lessons and I should have it done because the new life book for 2016 is starting up next week and I am signing up for that as well. So when I actually do put up my um, my video for my life book for 2015, I'll add the links on where you can um, look up the workshops. Uh, it's a year-long workshop that's uh, offered by Tam from Willowing Arts and it's really good. Um, you can see the progression and how much I've grown in my artwork since I've taken the course in January of this year. So enough on that, I'll put the links in my next video where you can find that. So then I have a massive um, 12 by 16 moleskin, and these are my other, this is my boyfriend's sketchbook actually, and a couple of those are his as well. And then I have some books, and I have a mess of stuff in here. I have Spectrum Noir alcohol markers, paint brushes, extra lip gloss, um, then I have uh, soft pastels, which are about maybe 15 years old that I don't use. Then I have this little ironing thing here for wax. Uh, and I have some more um, Prismacolor pencils and some little tools and charcoals and stuff. And this little thing down here 
Um, I just have some stamps and distress pads. I have a load of Twinkling H2Os and another journal and just various, uh, various storage. I have my extra pencil kits and, and watercolors and then down here I have my airbrush guns and my airbrush paints. And that is pretty much that area. So I have one more thing to go through. Let's see here. Inside here, this is a big um, toolbox that I got at Canadian Tire here in town. And this has a lot of inks, and I got a brayer, some acrylic paints, um, samples that Golden sent me a while ago. And I have Distress Inks. I have a lot of these. These were given to me as a Christmas gift a year or two ago. I'm not sure if it was last year or the year before. And I find that they're very messy to use, but I really like the, the outcome if you can actually get it to work right. And then I have a whole bunch of um, Golden Fluid Acrylics and um, what else is in here? And I have some um, liquid pearls and stuff like that. And then I have old cards in here for scratching paint on stuff. Let's see. Then in this drawer I have a full um, a full tray of golden heavy body acrylics that I don't really use a whole lot of only if I'm painting um, paintings to sell. I'll use these. Um, I don't like to use craft paint to when I'm making something to sell because I, I don't think that it's reasonable for me to ask what I'm asking for my paintings if I use a cheap quality paint. So that's what I have in there. And in here are the rest of my gelatos that I have. <clears throat> and I have some little um, brads and stuff that I bought and haven't used. And I have all of these Liquitex paint markers that I don't use a whole lot of because they, they, um, they're pretty shiny and I don't like that when they're dry. And then I have all of these um, Prolex powders in here that I was given for Christmas last year. Uh, these are all metallic colors. And then I have some more acrylic paints, Liquitex and Golden. And this I was given as a gift for my birthday. And it's to make stamps and stuff. Um, and you can carve them yourself. So that is pretty much everything that I have. And those are the basic supplies and everything that I use. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I can't get my jewelry to go back in here. I hope you enjoyed the video. And um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.